Hello everyone, welcome to a new series on the Hot Wax Developer Network channel. This is a special series about Ionic design system. So this has been something that I feel like has been missing desperately from just the open source community is a Figma design system focused especially on Ionic. Um, so basically this is published to the community so if anybody wants to go and grab this it's right here but what I found was if when I searched Ionic on Figma it's pretty much nothing except for the icons except for this design system that I've published. So I thought maybe I'd just help people understand how to use it. I think it's something really critical if you're in the Ionic development community. This is gonna like speed up your developer handoff by quite a bit and make your design process a lot faster. I actually decided to include some of the apps I designed myself with this design system in the published file itself so you can get a reference for how the designs work. Um, this is especially benefited greatly from the way um, auto layout has been updated recently. It just makes the scaling of components a lot easier and complex components are a lot easier to make now. So this consists of mostly all of the components. I don't think I'm missing anything dramatically. There's a few here and there like popover that aren't like completely done, but it's mostly complete and I think it's ready to use in your designs. So the way I want to cover this is a little bit different from if you followed my Capybara series is I think the way I'm going to do this is just build apps and show how to use the components right within those apps. So right below here I'm going to start a new project called um, Demo and if you ever feel like seeing how this is going you can just go and copy this file. I'll link it below in the description and dig into the components yourself. Um, so to start, uh, I think the easiest way to start is start with a new frame and these are all, all these components are built to work, fit exactly out of the box into an iPhone 10 frame, but obviously they can be resized to fit into any component, any frame. So to start, everybody needs in Ionic um, a toolbar. So the toolbar is right here. There's a lot of other components here and I'll get into what they are exactly. Uh, some of them are element components, some of them are pre-made, more complex components, but this is the toolbar component you're going to start with. So let's start, let's call this our home page. So let's say this is what we start with, so we can just center it and align it to the top. And this automatically has all the slots that your toolbar has in Ionic, and they're named in similar ways, so it's easy to get a hang of what's going on. So you have your content, your start slot, and your back button, and your menu button. Um, and then within your end slot, you have your menu toggle on the right, you have your text button if you want that, and you have your three other slots. So at any given moment, I think there's three or four, there's three or four slots total. So use these as you have slots available, basically. Um, so usually I'd say you can toggle this and this off and let's just say we want to have Oh, by the way, all Ionic components are built right into here. I don't know what exactly what version it is, but I'm going to give a shout out to um, I think this file I used their uh, Ionic Ionicons back in the day and I just moved them in here and turned them all into components that can be used So it's easy to flip through components. So let's just make this um, Let's just make it a heart icon. So let's say we're building an e-commerce website. So this is going to be our outline. It looks like we can get rid of the fill here to make sure it stays outlined. So this is going to be our wish list uh, hot towel. Uh, let's make this our home page, and we have our menu here. So this looks like a good way to start the toolbar. So as you can see, out of the box, pretty easy, ready to go. Um, so next what we want is maybe we want to put a list in here. So one way to do it could be to just pull an item out and just use an eye on item. And this is a decent way to start if you want to customize the look and feel of this right out of the gate. Um, you can just choose maybe a thumbnail item. And all the content in the beginning has a few different lines that you can just toggle on and off right here. So depending on how much stuff you want. 
uh, you can just toggle that all on right here. And same thing for the end. The end can get pretty as complicated as you want it to get. Uh, let's see real quick. This seems to be an issue. Um, let's just make sure all of these are, yeah, there we go. So you can toggle these on, add as much text to the end as you want. Pretty much, like, I don't think you're ever going to use all of these slots. And then if you ever want to get more complex, you can use the auto layout version of the end slot, which is useful if you want to add, like, buttons or badges, icons, um, detail push is just a chevron right icon so if you want to combine this with a note and so that turns it into kind of like a menu button or if you want to have a select uh item that's pre-built right into here so all the toggles you're probably ever going to need are built right in so for say if this is a shopping application this is probably going to be the price so let's turn that into ten ten dollars and we're going to have our product name, so that's probably going to be like hoodie, uh, colors, blue, black, red. And we want this to grow, not wrap. And sizes, we're going to have SM, L, and XL because we're American. So right there, you can see how easy it is to make an item. It scales automatically. So this is one way to do it, though. Another way could be that you want a list. And instead of having to create a list header or a list divider, there's actually a list component that I've built right out. So you drop this in, and it gives you a list header and divider out the box. Out of the box, so you can hide whichever one you don't want, and it uses auto layout to automatically automatically collapse. So maybe you want to put men's as your list header, and all of these maybe you want all of your items to be uh, thumbnail items. So boom, something like that, and then you can go and fill in however much data you want, or maybe you just want to have a few items, or just maybe you know like one or two, and you can make it look like that. So you can see how quickly you can set up your data in a comp right here. And all the padding is lined up so that you can just uh, push it right up against the toolbar. Um, so yeah, that's how you basically build out a list of items in the Ionic design system. Um, also, buttons, let's quickly go over. So let's say you want to add a fab over to your page right here. So just approximate the location of the fab. There's no like easy, quick way to do that. And then say you want to come in and just change the icon real quick. So let's, let's add an, a cart icon over here. Uh, every now and then you're going to have to fix up the colors. So icons usually use light on your colors. Boom. Uh, so there's a lot of toggles right here for what how you want your fab to be set up. Um, not all of these are going to carry over the changes you make, so set up your variant first and then make the like variant-specific changes. If you want to toggle on a list, this makes it pretty easy. So now you have a list of fabs. Um, if you want a mini fab, you can use that. Um, if you just want to quickly toggle on the secondary color, you can use that. And if you want to have this sec the selected state, which is just uh, the tint color, uh, you can use that too. Also, let's say we want to add a side menu just so we can have a reference of what our menu looks like. So we'd go over here and drop in our menu. And we can put in our brand name. So maybe this is a gap application. So gap, we have home, we have men's, uh, women's, and kids, and we have profile. So there's just like a basic menu of what you could possibly have. And you can fill in the icons that you want over here. And so let's just add a profile icon. So I think it's called a person. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, just, and you can see just like that, you could fill in as many icons as you want over here. I guess if you want to set up a product page, let's see what that would look like. So bring out a new frame, let's call it product. Product, 
and let's use our toolbar and just carry it over. So once we're on our product detail page, so let's just put um, product detail. And we know our we're gonna wanna use a back button now. So since it's one of those commonly used buttons, I just decided to add it over here so that you don't have to keep constantly go back over here and find the button. Um, and let's just put in an image. Uh, use the one-to-one -one image, so this can just scale however you want. So I feel like that's a pretty good size. Um, we'll throw in um, maybe some product name. Uh, and just choose some fonts over here. I think yeah, that looks about good. Uh, let's call it breezy hoodie. Uh, and let's put some selectors for color. Let's make it kind of small. And we're going to want a size selector too. Uh, and so for this, I feel like chips is a pretty good out of the box UI. So I'm just going to come over here, select chips. And I'm going to drop in the chips component. So chips have a lot of slots within themselves. Um, from the variants, you can just toggle on if you want outline chips or not and what state you want. So it just makes it easy to have different looks, basically. Uh, what's important within this, though, is the slots within here. So if you have a close kind of chip for some reason, that can go in there. If you have an icon for, if you want to show icons for selected or anything else, or if you want to put in an avatar, you can have that too. So I think for ours, we'll have a selected icon and we'll do colors, we'll do red. Let's turn this icon off. Blue and yellow some strong colors uh, I like to just quickly distribute spacing 8 pixels is usually good um, and s do something similar for sizes is do small medium large Ooh. Eight. So yeah, quickly we've set up a list of chips over here without having to do any custom work for them and all the spacing is going to look pretty similar when you go into Ionic. Um, and then we want maybe an add to cart button. So this is kind of an interesting component. This is probably one of the most versatile components. So it starts off pretty basic. We can center it. Uh, let's put it like 24 pixels from the thing up above. So once it's centered, we have a couple of different variants over here. So we can choose um, large, regular, small. So these are button sizes that we have in Ionic. So we can choose a large button, small button. Small buttons are usually good if you want to use them like a lot together or if you want to put them inside of an item. And you can choose what style. So text buttons, outline buttons, contain buttons. If you want them to be enabled or not. So I think for here, we have a regular buttons fine. So by default, this is just going to scale to whatever we add. So add to cart. But say we want to make this a full button. So we just hit enter and change this auto layout property from hug contents to fill container. So now, since the content inside is filling the container, we can resize this to whatever we want. So the default is 343. So that gives us a nice 16 pixels of padding from the right and left, and now everything centers perfectly. So we can turn on um, the icon forward and back, uh, like the, basically the end and start slots for the icons. I think here a nice icon could be the cart icon. Again, just hit light on this. So there, we've got a solid icon, a solid button going. I think 
we can change it to outline and it maintains most of what's inside of it. You're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup on your own. So for your icon, you're just gonna have to go through all of these and make sure you select primary. So yeah, for contained, uh, oops, we're just doing a little bit of cleanup to make sure everything's good. So the point is, it's not going to do everything for you. There's a little bit of uncertainty with Figma, but it's going to get you 80% there with your designs. Uh, so you have that. Um, yeah. So these are a few components that I've covered right now. There's obviously a lot more that you can do. Um, you could use a, you could have used a select drop down for these or many other things. You could have added a range selector. Uh, and I'll go into all of those in future videos, but for now, these are a few commonly used components in Ionic and how to use them. Alright, thanks.